Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a notification component for your Power Apps. So stay tuned. So today we're going to learn how we can create a notification component in Power App. But before that, let's see what's come out of the box. So in Power App, we have something called Notify. It's a function that allows us to uh, display a notification. And the property that comes with it is a text. So you can uh, add your text here. Another parameter that you can pass, the type of notification. So you can say it's a error, information, success, or warning. Another property that you can pass is the timeout. If you didn't pass anything, it's by default 10 seconds, or you can pass a number of seconds that you want this notification to be stay. Let's run this one. Now, if I click on this button, you can see the notification display on the top. Let's say if I want to make changes to this notification. So for example, instead of showing this background color, I like to use some other color here. Or maybe the length of this notification is not really I like. I want to make it align with my app. Or maybe I want this notification to show at the bottom of my app. So because of these features, I thought let's why not build a custom component. So what I build, let me show you first. So this is my sample app. I added four button here on click of each button. I'm going to show you the different kind of notification that show up. So if I click on confirmation, you can see now the notification is coming just inside my app and I can control these color the logo and everything that comes in the notification. Similarly, if I click on error, notification announcement. And the good thing about this component, you can extend this for any further type of notification that you like in your app. So how to build this, right? That's the question that you might be thinking that, okay, it's looking good, but how I can build it. So let me show you. So this is the app that I was showing. And in this app, you can see I'm using this component. And that's the, that's the notification component that we're going to see how this work and what all different features this component provide. So I quickly go to my components. Now, if you guys want to learn more about component, how you can build, what are the best practices, like for an example, you should always start creating component under component library. So if you want to know more about uh, these basics, uh, leave a comment. I may create a video on the component what you should be doing, what you should not be doing, and where to start, okay? So this is my component. As you can see, it's very straightforward, simple component. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through each uh, functionality of this and how you can build. So the first thing that you need to do, you need to click on the new component, and it's going to create the new component. You can give a name for your component, and then start creating the properties. So if I go back to my component, on the right hand side under custom properties, this is where you define the different properties for this component. And why we need these property? Because these property will look going to allow the app maker who is going to use this component to set and use this property uh, in their app, right? So the first property that we need is the message. This is the type text property. And this is the property that going to uh, hold the message, the actual notification message that you wanted to present. The next property, we need the text color. So this can be the color of the text that is going to display on the notification. So in my example, you can see it's showing the black color here. The next property, you need the type. So this is the type of notification. Now you can define any type of notification. It, this is just a reference. So in our case, we have seen the four notification, error, announcement, and success. Those four type of notification. You can define your own type. And based on that type, there is some logic that you can define. So for example, what kind of icon or the image that you will use for that particular type or what kind of color you will use for that particular type. Okay. So this is type text, simple property. The next is a Boolean property. This is show alert. So this is the property that we can set or reset whenever we want the notification to display. Very important property because this is the property that is going to define when my alert 
or my notification will show up on the app and when it is not. Okay, so there's true false show alert. The next one is the location property. So in this property, what you are saying, whether my notification is going to be on the top of the screen or at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so this property help us defining that. The next property you can define is the fill color. This is the fill color or the background color of my alert. So you, if you see here, it's the light blue colors, right? So you can define the background color for your alert based on your theme that you're applying in your app. And the last property is the duration. So how long you want your notification to be displayed. So this is the number property that you can define and based on the number of milliseconds, the notification will stay that long. Okay, so these are the key property that you should be defining when you're creating this alert component. Now let's see what all different control that you need inside this notification. So as you can see here, we definitely need an label that will show the notification. We also need the icon for our notification, right? So let's start with the label and what we have in that label. So what nothing you need to do, you need to just drop a label in this component. And in the label, the first property that we need to look is X and Y of this label. And why this is important because we don't want this label to be display all the time. We want this to be display whenever we want the notification to be displayed. Okay. So the X property for this label, we're going to define app dot active screen dot width so what we are saying the whatever width of the active screen that's going to be the starting x uh, wait for this point and the y should be based on the location so if user is saying the location is top then it should be zero top of the screen if it is not top then what we are saying the app dot active screen dot height so whatever the height of my app minus height of this label is going to be the Y. So then it will move to the bottom. Okay. Then the next is the width. So width again, whatever the width of the component. So this is the name of my component dot width. So that should be the width of my notification label. Height, I'm keeping it 70. The next we need to also add some padding on the left. So if you see, this is my label and we also have the icon displaying here. So we need to make sure that the text start after the image or the icon end. So this is my alert icon image, as you can see here, dot width plus 10. So what I'm saying, give me the left padding that's going to be equal to the width of the image plus uh, 10. So that way the, the text will always be next to the icon image. Okay. The next we need to define the color for our label, that is the fill color. So as you can see here, what I'm doing here, I'm using the color fade function and the color value that is coming from the fill color property of my component. So color, getting the color value using the color value function and fading it for 80%. Okay. So these are the key property for the label. Now let's look at the icon. So for icon, I'm just using the standard image, but for actual image, I'm using the SVG and how you can uh, use the SVG. Uh, if you don't know, let me know again. I can definitely uh, create a video for that. But if you look here, I'm using a switch function based on the type. So if type is the notification, I'm using this SVG image. If type is the error, then another SVG. If type confirmation, another SVG and if announcement, another SVG. Now, if you like to have some different kind of notification, you can definitely define the type and uh, applicable SVG image here. X and Y of the icon is going to be whatever X and Y of my label. So it will align with my label. Height also I'm aligning it with my label. So whatever height of my label is going to be the height of my image. And then again, the fill color. So very similarly, how we are using the fill color for the label. This time we are just using the color fill and whatever the fill color, that's going to be the background of this icon. Okay, so now we have defined 
the, the label and the icon, but how we can display it when someone click a button or uh, based on some event. So to display the notification and hide it, what I'm using, I'm using two timer control. So first timer control, and let me make them visible. So this is my first timer control. This is to show the alert. So this timer control is responsible to displaying the alert whenever that event happens. Either it's button click or maybe you receive a response from, uh, from an API or from the SharePoint. The second timer is to hide the alert. Okay, so let's look at the first timer and how this works. So the first thing that we need to define on this timer is the duration, that how long this timer should run. And what I'm saying here that whatever the active screen width, so if I'm adding this component to a particular screen, whatever width of that screen minus 40 is going to be the duration of this timer. So in this case, let's say the, the width of my screen is 640, then this timer will run for 600 milliseconds. The next we need to define when it will start. So for that, let's go to the start property of the timer. And when it's gonna start, whenever the show alert property of my component is true, start this timer. Now, let me go back to the alert, show you the X position of this label. And you see here saying timer show alert dot value. So now this whole X can be very easily understood. So the X of this label, what we are saying, it's going to be the width of the screen. So that is 640 in this case, minus the value of my timer show alert. So when I click on a button in my app or when the event will happen, this timer will start and it start counting forward until whatever the value is. So in this case, 600, right? So the X position will start also changing based on this value increasing. So it will start from 640, that is out of the screen, and then it will start reducing because this value is increasing. So this, the alert will start showing up on the app and it will display. So that's how you display the alert when someone click on that event button or event happen. Okay, now the display part is done. You also need to make sure that once it's display, you, you want to uh, auto hide it after some time after the duration property. So for that, what you need to do in this show alert timer, on timer end property, so when this timer will end, we're gonna set a variable that is called variable hide alert. And what is this variable is gonna use? It's gonna to use to start our second timer control. So what we are saying, when this alert will completely display, set this variable. And if I go to the second timer control, and if you go to the start property of this one, it is based on that variable hide alert, right? So whenever the first timer will complete, it will set the variable hide alert true and the second timer will kick off. And the second timer duration is going to be the equal to the duration that we are setting for this alert to be displayed. This is coming from our component. So if I'm saying it is going to be 2000 milliseconds, that is two seconds, this timer will run for two seconds. Once this timer, the second timer ends, we need to hide this alert automatically, right? So to do that, what we need to do, if you remember the X of our label is the width minus the timer show alert, the first timer value. So if somehow we can make this zero, then this alert will all the way go back. And how you can do that? You just need to reset this first timer control whenever the second timer control ends. So the logic is when the second timer ends, so that's the when timer end property, we are setting another variable that is variable reset alert. And using this reset alert in our first timer control, reset property. So we are resetting the first timer whenever the reset alert true. And that's it, fair enough, right? So, and this is all you need to do for this alert to work. Just setting up these icons label, setting the width and the X of the label and two timer control, those are actually interdependent to each other. 
Perfect. Now let me go back to the screen and let me add another a new screen here, right? And let me insert the component. Let's insert a button. And on click of this button, what you need to do, you need to set a variable. And what we are going to use this variable for, we are using this variable to start the notification. And you see, this is the property that we have defined show alert. So we're going to pass our variable, variable start. And I can also set another variable here for the type, right? So on, on click of this button, what I'm doing, I'm setting the variable start true and also setting type is the notification. So let me run this app. And as you can see, my notification alert is showing up here. Now let's change this to error. So let's say now the type of the notification is error. And now you have the error notification, right? The next let we can try the announcement. And now we have the announcement notification. So this is all guys. Uh, this is how easy you can create or quickly you can create this component and use it in your app and also extend it beyond these four type of notification that I'm showing right now. So yes, feel free to use it. I'm also going to add a link in this video so you can download this app with the component so you don't need to build it. You can just reuse it. But I explain so you know how the component work if in case you want to extend that. So again, thank you for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave the comment. As I said, if you like to know more about component, I can definitely make more videos on components and how the components work. Thank you.